Today, I'm going to show you how easy and inexpensive it is to make custom brew water. Just a word of caution though, once you enter this rabbit hole, there's no going back. So credit where it's due, this video is primarily based on an incredible blog post by Jonathan Gagne, which we've linked to in the description below. If you're curious or interested in the science behind coffee, then you should absolutely check out all of his work and get a hold of his book, The Physics of Filter Coffee. Other people who've done some great work on the subject that we've learned a lot from would be Barista Hustle, Scott Rayo, Mitch Hale, and of course, Maxwell Colonna Dashwood and Christopher Hendon. Anyway, let's get right to it. If you're wondering why on earth we need custom water for coffee and the whole concept feels a bit ludicrous, then you're not alone. This was me just a few years ago and I remember at the time feeling like this was just so extra. But fast forward to today and you're looking at someone who owns a mini distiller, which we'll talk about a little later on, and a bunch of minerals and equipment to make special brew water. Trust me, I'm not proud of it, but what can I say? Once you've tasted the good stuff, it's really hard to go back. Okay, so let's look at why you should probably consider special water for brewing your coffee and briefly talk about the science. Now, we're not going to go deep into the science in this video because we just wanted this to be a super easy guide on how to make delicious brew water at home for very little money. It would be great if good tasting water was all you needed to brew tasty coffee, but that just isn't the case, unfortunately. There are two main aspects of your water's chemical composition that affect the taste of your coffee and how it's extracted. The first and most important one is alkalinity, and this is the amount of buffer or bicarbonate ions in the water. The higher the total alkalinity, the more stable the pH is, but if you have it too high, then it'll mask some very important flavors and mute acidity. If it's too low, the acidity will run amok and throw the cup off balance. So it's important to get this right. The second one is mineral ions, namely magnesium and calcium that contribute to extracting and presenting the nuances and flavors within the coffee in different ways. It is still unclear exactly how the two impact the taste, but suffice to say that they do amazing things when present in the right quantities. So you may have great tasting water, but if it doesn't check these two boxes of ideal alkalinity and mineral content, then you won't be experiencing the coffee at its full potential. This is a very deep and very complex subject, but hopefully this explanation helps you understand why custom brew water can help you brew better coffee. So let's talk about what you'll need and how to easily whip up a concentrate that'll be good for a whopping 50 liters of brew water. You'll need scales that are accurate down to at least the tenth of a gram. A 0.01 gram resolution is even better. A spatula or a small spoon to transfer the minerals. A small bowl to weigh out the minerals. A glass container to mix your brew concentrate in. Food grade distill water. Now, this is hard to find here in India and is why we ended up buying a small distiller because we just didn't want to keep buying bottles of Aquafina. For those of you who are confused, Aquafina is mineral water that has a TDS of 5. In fact, we've tested bottles that have gone as low as 2. So it's basically distilled water and in a pinch, you could add minerals to it to make your brew water. And lastly, of course, you need the minerals themselves. Just make sure they're food grade though. Pharma and lab grade are purer but can sometimes contain traces of heavy metals and way more dangerous impurities. So basically what you need to get started is just two minerals but we'll get a little fancy and use five because why the hell not. But don't worry, we've shared a link in the description below with several recipes so once you understand the process of making the concentrate, you can make any recipe you want. So first up, we have Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate. Note that this is the heptahydrate as opposed to just MgSO4, so it'll look like clear crystals. Next, we have calcium chloride, and here we're using the anhydrous form, but you could also use the dihydrate. Then we have magnesium chloride, and here again, we're using the hexahydrate. So these first three help with the magnesium and calcium ions. And the next two, which are baking soda or sodium bicarbonate and potassium bicarbonate, help with the buffering. Now, these are fairly easily available in the US and in the UK, 
but they're a little trickier to get a hold of in India. So we've linked to all of these minerals in the description below. So you'll know exactly where to find them. The potassium bicarbonate was by far the hardest to find. And we tracked down this company in Surat in Gujarat called Camel, and we've linked to that too. But the catch is we had to buy five kilos. So we have a lifetime supply of that. Great. So now that we have everything that we need, let's look at how to make the concentrate. Hang on a second. Before we show you how to make the concentrate, we'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. We hate asking, but it makes a huge difference with the algorithm. And if you'd like to show us some extra love, we're on Patreon and you can support us there too. Anyway, back to the lab. The recipe we'll be making today is the Rayo Perga recipe and is what we use daily. We have modified it a bit, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just keep it stock. Carefully weigh out the following quantities of each of the five minerals. Five grams of Epsom salt, two grams of MgCl, 1.5 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride, 1.7 grams of baking soda, and lastly, two grams of potassium bicarbonate. Now, you want the weight of the dry ingredients plus the weight of the distilled water to equal 200 grams. The minerals we just listed weigh 12.2 grams in total. So 200 minus 12.2 is 187.8, and that's the amount of distilled water you'd need to mix your minerals into. This mixture will degas, so leave it lightly closed in a glass or plastic jar and give it a quick stir every 30 minutes or so to move things along. And in a few hours, you should have your brew water concentrate. You can use warm water to expedite the degassing process, but don't make it too hot that evaporation then becomes an issue. Once degassed, store in an airtight container in a cool dark place. You can even put it in the fridge. The concentrate will be a white cloudy liquid and precipitate solids. Be sure to give the container a good shake before using the concentrate. Now, using this concentrate is super simple. All you need to do is add 4 ml of concentrate per liter of distilled water. Give it a good shake to mix everything up and voila, you have yourself some custom brew water. Then all that's left to do is brew some coffee. Oh, and try and compare it to your regular water and let me know how it goes in the comments below. I would love to hear about your experience. But now let's quickly look at how much all of this cost us. So if you look at the table, this is what we paid for 100 grams of each of these minerals and 200 grams of distilled water. With some basic math, we can calculate that the concentrate we just made cost us, any guesses? 20 cents. That's just 16 rupees to make 50 liters of brew water. Compare that to say third waves, 12 gallon or 54 liter pack, and you're paying $17. Even if you factor in the fixed cost of cheap $5 jewelry scales, it's still way cheaper. That being said, it's still quite a bit more work that a lot of people may not want to do. So. Having the convenience of sachets or pre-dosed bottles is great if you're okay with the additional cost. Anyway, before I let you go, here's a list of some awesome additional resources and tools, all of which we've linked to in the description below, and a few very important things to keep in mind. Number one, while it's normal for the concentrate to be cloudy, your brew water should be clear. If it isn't, you may have got the quantities or the ratios wrong. Number two, Check out Jonathan Garnier's Water Crafter to craft your own recipes. Number three, and this one's important, espresso machines have sensitive internal parts that can get easily damaged if the water creates too much limescale buildup or is too corrosive. You can use a nifty tool by David Seng to check this and ensure that a given recipe is safe to use in your machine. Number four, once again, get food grade and not pharma or lab grade minerals. Number five, if you plan to experiment with many different recipes, then definitely check out Mitch Hale's blog post on creating individual mineral concentrates, which can then be easily mixed into distilled water to try different recipes. This is much quicker than using dry ingredients. And lastly, check out Barista Hustle's incredible work on water for coffee. They also have some really simple recipes to get you started. Well, that's a wrap on this one. Now we'd love to hear from you. Have you tried making your own water at home and what has your experience been? Let us know in the comments below and as always, thank you so much for watching and brew Aramse. Peace.